of the show where we discuss hot issues to do with teenagers and uh, parenting. Uh, it is a part two of a conversation that we kick-started last week, keeping your eyes on the Teen Gauge part two. Uh, teen Gauge, the word that Coach Tafadz got coined, just to put it out there. <laughs> good morning, Coach. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? How's your week? Well, my week has started good and um, I'm loving it. Wonderful, love that. So, um, keeping your eyes on the team gauge, uh, it's part two, maybe a recap of um, what we discussed last week. Yeah, so uh, when we talk about the team gauge, we're talking about um, a way of uh, measuring how your teenage is progressing in their teen uh, teenage. So, teenage is a period between 13 and uh, 19, and that is a period characterized by puberty, and it's a period of... Um, growth space there's a lot of changes that are happening emotionally physically so you need to be watching out for those changes so that you're not left in the cold as a parent and if there are adjustments that you need to make then you can quickly adjust them because you will be looking at that teen gauge you'll be looking at the how they're progressing as they're growing from becoming um uh, from being a child into becoming an adult into becoming an an independent self so basically that's what we were talking about um last week and today we want to focus on um, listening which is part of paying attention to the team gauge which is part listening of, yeah listening ah. and listening is something that's very complex well we will get to understand as, as as we progress you know in my line of work i've got the privilege of working with both parents and teenagers and when i am with parents a lot of them feel that their teenagers are very difficult to get through to when it comes to communication you know they feel like their teenagers are like a gated community Padlocked gate, a passworded gate with a big bulldog in front, and if they even if they want to get through, it's just too hard to, yeah. if not impossible to. That's the feeling that many parents of teenagers have. But then when I also go to teenagers and talk to them, you know, I get the sense that they are so yearning to talk to their parents. They've got so much to share with their parents, but they feel like the parents don't provide a conducive enough environment for them to be able to open up. So the teenagers are willing to talk to. Uh, their parents but feel like it's very difficult to at the same time parents are also willing to talk to their uh, children but they feel uh, their children are difficult to talk to so you have on one hand teenagers who feel that their parents are the problems and then you also have parents feeling that their children are the problems so if you are a parent uh, here's news for you what I want to tell you is that uh, your child is not the problem neither are you mm -hmm. the problem is the problem <laughs> so well, the, the problem is the problem. Yeah, is the problem. And the question is, what is the problem? So the biggest problem is communication. And one of the foundations of con communi good communication is listening, which is what we want to talk about today. There is a huge difference between listening and hearing. So for hearing, all you need are your ears. And you could be doing anything else and you're just hearing. And sometimes we mistaken hearing for listening. Listening needs more than just your ears you listen with your voice so those vo voice variations the intonation when you those um mm -hmm, uh-huh you're actually helping to shape the speaker so whether or not they will tell you more whether they become confident in speaking to you is determined by how you are uh, paying attention to them using your whole body your whole body language you know you listen with your with your hands sometimes you listen with your touch that assuring touch causes them to actually pull out more sometimes uh, that I uh, that, that you give to them speak something sometimes you also listen with your smile so listening is, is, is more engaging it's, it's more than just hearing so it's actually like giving, uh, devoting yourself, giving yourself time and saying, okay, we're going to be having this conversation. I'm going to be listening. So I'm closing my mind from every other thing. And all I just want to do is to listen. You know, why is it important to listen and not just to hear? You know, just hearing uh, gives you an, an opportunity to hear the what. So you're hearing the what of the story. But then when you're listening, now you also get the what because there's context, there are nuances and all of that you're getting. So listening them. is an art? Yes, it is. Ah. It, it, it is and it, it requires It's not effort. hearing, it's, it's listening. It's not just hearing, <laughs> yeah. You, you know, um, it, it, it takes time, you know. 
the people who feel like, ah, but I'm listening. And then somebody has been telling you a story, and then in the middle of the story, they're like, ah, no, I'm not, I'm not telling you anymore. You're not listening to me. And she's like, no, I'm listening. And you even maybe uh, uh, say back some words that I would have said. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you said this. No, yeah, you had that, but you were not listening. Mm. I mean, because there's, there, there's deeper meaning in the words. It's not just the words, but there's actually um, a deeper meaning in the words. So it's important to listen. But before you even listen, you need to understand what is listening. So like I've said, it, it takes the whole body. And then you're, you're really uh, engaged. And um, I was explaining how when you listen, you get more than what you get when you just hear. You get the why. So uh, I'll give an example. Let's say maybe uh, this is a very serious issue. Your daughter is telling you a story. And then in the middle of the story, they tell you that I'm now pregnant. So you've had that. So for most people, uh, they then uh, quick in, um, uh, jump in with their own conclusions and they already want to react and, and, and do all sorts of things. But if you were to continue listening, you would maybe then realize that she's pregnant because she's been raped. She's pregnant because this has happened or that has happened. And then your response after you've listened to the full story, after you've listened to understood, will be very dif uh, different. Maybe now instead of chasing the daughter away and taking all those drastic actions, you actually realize that there's a need to take the, uh, the, the daughter to hospital for counseling. And, and, and there's need to report to the police because you've given your daughter an opportunity to tell the whole story. And she was able to tell the whole story because you were listening. You were actually are paying attention to the emotions being expressed. You were paying attention to uh, the body language. If you were also paying attention to, to the body language, maybe you would have realized that they were joking. So maybe you quickly like took the whole thing what did some or did I say by the time your daughter is telling you that I'm joking, it's already too late. I'm moody at which in the conversation can't be continued. So, th this is why um, it's important to listen. So, I I'll, I'll talk about how do you how do you listen? Like we've said, it's an art, it's not something that we all are naturally able to do, it's something that you actually have to learn. So, how do you listen? So, the, the first thing here is you need to be curious. So um, what I mean by being curious is that you need to be completely available to what the other person is say, saying to you. Because sometimes we listen to people with this confirmation bias. So we're looking for evidence to support what we already think this person is going through or is going to say. Mm -hmm. So we're not really like mm -hmm. listening completely. We already think, okay, this is what happened and this is what they're going to say. So that's what we're looking out for. But we're not listening to understand. So you need to, f to, to give yourself completely uh, to 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 what they're going to say and that's being curious so you're not listening with your own preconceived um, ideas you know there's this thing that i always tell to people who work with teenagers including parents that when it comes to dealing with teenagers you need to hold your assumptions lightly so there are many things that we assume but if you listen and pay attention you will be surprised that no it's not actually it so um be curious and then number two here, I, I wrote down, free your mind. So there's this sensation uh, or feeling that's called um, ambiguous loss. I don't know if you're familiar with it. So uh, it's, a, it's a feeling that you've lost someone, mm. but when they're actually still physically present. Mm. So this could happen momentarily, like in a conversation. So maybe you're speaking to somebody and you feel like they're no longer paying attention. Yes. So that, that that's, that's that's like an ambiguous loss. The person is there, is but you there feel like physically, I've, but they yeah, you feel like you've lost. You're not them. connecting. Yeah. So they, 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 a lot of times teenagers feel that way when they're communicating with their parents, and sometimes it's also the parents that feel that way. So you're trying to put across a point, and you actually see that this person is not uh, uh, listening. They may be hearing. Yes, you may ask them what did I say, and they would say, but they're really not like listening. So they're missing a lot from the emotion of things. They're they they they're, they're missing a lot from your, your your body language. So it's important to free your mind. Otherwise, you end up expressing uh, the wrong emotions. Ambiguous um, loss. Loss. Yes. Mm, okay. Are you googling that? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm okay, listening. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're listening. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, so, okay. like, like I've said, you actually shape the speaker through listening. 
So when you're going to ask questions, when you're going to uh, make those noises, the mm-hmms, the ahas that we talked about, then the speaker will feel like, okay, maybe I need to say more about this, or maybe I'm free to cry. Maybe it's one of those sad uh, situations that, that, they are, that, that, that they are sharing, and they feel like, oh, you're really um, validating their feelings, you're really there for, uh, uh, for them, and then they end up like, um, like crying. So it's important to free your mind because if you're thinking about what 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 is happening at work, maybe somebody um, did something wrong to you, and you're emotional about it. And you're thinking, how could you do that to to me? And yet you're also trying to listen to your child. At the end of the day, the child says something, and then you're like, "Hi, you vibe, man," and you're like, "No, <laughs> I, I I'm just telling you a story." Mm. And then now they are confused. They don't understand why you could say that. But then the reason is that your mind was busy. There are other things that you're thinking about. And then um, the, 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 the next thing when we, uh, when, we, when we talk about freeing your mind is, you know, being an adult, when you grow, you become preachy because you've seen a lot of life. <laughs> so you yeah. feel like, okay, I know this, <laughs> I've been through this, so I need to tell you so that you don't make the same mistakes that I've also yes. made. So you have the tendency of wanting to preach even before fully understanding what the person is trying to say to you. So you then do that. And you know, the problem with that is when you are preachy the person feels like i'm not understood and they're likely going to dismiss what you're going to say even if it makes sense and when they dismiss it you are offended because you feel like what i'm giving you is high quality advice you should mm. be taking this why are you dismissing it mm. so rather than um imposing it or just saying it you would rather suggest because suggesting is part of listening so you you're like okay so this is what you're saying you've gone through how about if you do this so if the person then says so you can't dictate yeah you you, 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 you well you can but you shouldn't uh so when you then say um how about you do this the person could say mm, i really don't think it's a good idea you're not also offended because you don't feel like you've been rejected so to speak but then if you say do this and then the child no i'm not going to do that then it's it becomes offensive to you and then instead of you continuing the, co- the conversation in a good way now yet our problem and then um moving on it's important to create time also mm-hmm. you know i've realized like um i, I have one on one on one sessions um, a lot of times so when teenagers come the first things that i normally do with them is to just sit them down and then we play a game uh, we look for some fun exercise that we do together and whilst we're playing together there's a way you bond you've created rapport and then when it comes to then discussing already a relationship has been formed so creating time having a play date I know that parents are busy but just create maybe one day out of even two weeks where you're just saying I'm giving this time to my child we're going to play together we're going to have conversations you know I'll, I'll put a question out there some of you parents have got children who are in boarding school since they came back did you ever have a time to just like have a seat down where you talk where you're not on your phone where you're not on your laptop and trying to like work out things imagine this you are doing your accounting whatever from work and then your child is trying to tell you something you will obviously won't be able to get the full thing so you want yeah. to like be fully uh, fully engaged so it's important to create time because you know what I've, I've, I've realized this um interesting thing the time you're spending on something is the time you're not spending on something mm. so what that basically means is if you're spending time arguing with your child or um exchanging those words that same time you are not using it to bond with your children so it's an either or it's either you're going to be doing the positive or you're going to be doing the the negative so you have to be intentional about it and like i always say teenage is a phase your child is not going to be a teenager for, uh, for life it's just a phase once that phase is gone it's gone once they are 19 and gone to uni maybe they go overseas maybe that's the last time you have a real um chance to influence their life by the time they come back they may be married or they're already working have their own space and you've already lost the time to like influence them they've become their own person so it's a time that you need to really be intentional about and take advantage of to make sure that you help shape the kind of adult that you want out of your teenager 
And then I think we, we, we mentioned this uh, uh, briefly, asking questions. It's also part of listening. So you want so to ask your teenager questions? Questions, yes. Okay. So follow up questions. Oh, okay. So you told me about this friend and you said this friend is new. Okay, which school were they from at all? So they actually feel that you're listening. And also in asking those questions, you are understanding. Because there's this principle, seek first to understand and then to be understood. When somebody feels like they've been understood, you've given them an, a chance to express themselves and now you understand them. They give you space to then say what you want. They give you uh, consent even to uh, advise them. You know, they, 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 there comes a point where maybe we've, we've actually experienced this with friends or with other people. They come to you, they've got their issue and you give yourself completely to what they're saying. You're listening to them. Mm. So when you're given that consent now, you can actually tell them what you think should be done. And their chances, the, the chances that they will take whatever it is you've said and implemented is actually now high because they've given you consent. I want to go to kids advice. You know, advice is called advice for a reason. It's like a gift. A person can accept or reject it. So we should always be... Um, cognizant of that fact that okay i've given advice i shouldn't be offended because yeah it's advice anyway so um my uh, encouragement to parents uh as i leave is just create some time and try and listen put your phones away uh, uh clear your mind make sure that that maybe 20 minutes or 30 minutes you devote it to your child you just listen to them and you hear what's happening in their lives you will be surprised how much they've grown you will be surprised how much is happening in their lives they could be stressed they could be going through something and i'm sure you'll get this good feeling if you are the first person that your child is going to open up to i'm sure as a parent like, that's all we, yeah that that, 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 that that's what we want so uh, before I go, I'll just give my WhatsApp number. If you're a parent, you want to be part of our WhatsApp group, uh, groups where we discuss these issues and more to do with teenagers, please feel free to send your name, your child's name to my WhatsApp number. My WhatsApp number is 0773-606-728. 0773-606-728. And if you are a teenager and you also want to get in touch and maybe ask questions, feel free to uh, send me a WhatsApp message to that number. Coach Tefazwa, thank you so much. Uh, really, you know, you always come through with some powerful insights uh, to help us navigate the world of parenting. Looking forward to next week's session. Taking our time to 11 o'clock, Star FM sounding good all the time. It is time for the news.